Hello. In this problem, we're given a series of readings off of strain gauges that came off of a strain rosé on an object made out of AISI 302 stainless steel. For convenience, I went ahead and wrote down a uh, little diagram of the strain rosé here. And I also wrote all of the givens for the materials and the readings on each of the strain gauges. Now, the first step in order to be finding the principal stresses is to find the state of strain associated with this strain rosé. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and use our strain rosé equations. Now, just looking at this problem, I see that strain gauge number two is on the horizontal axis here. What that means is theta is zero for that equation. So to make things a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the equation for strain gauge number two. Epsilon two is equal to 200 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inches. And that is equal to epsilon x cosine squared theta plus epsilon y sine squared theta plus the shear strain sine theta cosine theta. Now, as I mentioned, the theta for strain gauge number two is zero. So what that means is this term sine of zero goes to zero, and this term, sine of zero, goes to zero. And we are then left with epsilon two is equal to sigma x cosine of zero. Well, cosine of zero is just one, so epsilon two is equal to epsilon x, which is equal to 200 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inch. All right. Now that we have this done for gauge number two, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our equations for gauges one and three. Epsilon one is equal to negative 300 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inch, which is equal to the same numbers up here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is plug in this epsilon x value now at the beginning. 100 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inch. And here we're looking at cosine of negative 75 degrees, which is really the same as cosine 75, but for consistency's sake, we will go ahead and uh, use the correct angle measurement there. And that is plus epsilon y, and well, that's also squared, epsilon y sine squared of negative 75 degrees plus the shear strain sine of negative 75 cosine of negative 75. All right, now uh, please go ahead and trust me when I say that this simples down to, uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and solve for epsilon y, both for this uh, equation for strain gauge one and strain gauge three. I'll set those equal to each other to find a value for my shear strain and then plug that back into one of these equations to find my strain in the y. So what I'm doing here is I'm solving for sigma y, which is equal to negative 3.134 times 10 to the negative fourth inches per inch plus 0.25 shear strain there, divided by sine squared of negative, I'm sorry, 75 degrees. So this 0.25 term comes from combining this cosine and sine terms here. Um, the sine squared underneath comes from dividing out um, this epsilon y. So we're moving everything over to this side of the equation, then dividing by that sine squared negative 75 degrees. And that value comes out to simplify a little bit nicer at negative 3.359 times 10 to the negative fourth plus 0.2688 shear xy. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the same process for gauge number three here. 
and that's going to be equal to 425 times 10 to the negative 6 inches per inch. It's going to be equal to all the same things up here, but with this new angle measurement. So it's going to be equal to 200 times 10 to the negative 6 inches per inch times cosine squared of 75 degrees, because that's where the strain, uh, strain gauge 3 is there, plus epsilon y sine squared of positive 75 degrees plus that shear strain sine of 75 degrees cosine of 75 degrees. And we do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and solve for sigma y. I'm sorry, epsilon y. And that's going to simplify down to 4.11 times 10 to the negative fourth inches per inch minus 0.25, that shear strain, that positive. So what happened here is um, we ended up having that positive 0.25 and negative 0.25 here. That's just because of the negative value of sine. Cosine of negative 75 is the same as cosine 75, but these are not the same value. So that's where we have the difference in the positive and the negative here. And then you're going to go ahead and still divide that by sine squared 75 degrees. And that epsilon y is going to be equal to 4.411 times 10 to the negative fourth inches per inch. I'm sorry about my handwriting. I know it's not the best. Minus 0.268 shear xy. So now we have two equations here solving for epsilon y. We're going to go ahead and set them equal to each other. And when we do that, that will go ahead and simplify to 7.77 times 10 to the negative fourth, which is equal to 0.536 shear xy. And that shear strain value is going to be equal to 0 0.00145 inches per inch. Great, yay. So we now have two of our strains in our um, state of strains here. We have our strain X, our, uh, our shear strain. Now we're gonna go ahead and go back and solve for strain Y. And when we do that and we plug this back into either this equation or this equation here, we receive, I keep on saying sigma instead of epsilon. They kind of look the same, but uh, epsilon Y is equal to 5.262 times 10 to the negative fifth inches per inch. So now at this point, we have our state of strains. We have uh, our strains in our normal strain in the X, our normal strain in the Y, and our shear strain. So at this point, we can go one of two routes. We can either take our current state of strains and find our principal strains, and then from there, transform those into stresses and have our principal stresses, or we can change them into stresses now and then go through the stress transformation to find our principal stresses then. And this problem asks for that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is use Hooke's Law to turn these strains into stresses, and then use Mohr's Circle to find out what our principal stresses are. So uh, using Hooke's Law, what we've got going on is uh, we're going to use these constants up here. Our strain, I'm sorry, our stress in the x direction is equal to our modulus of elasticity divided by one minus the square of uh, Poisson's ratio squared times your strain in the X plus Poisson's ratio strain in the Y. And that is going to be equal to 28 times 10 to the sixth PSI divided by one minus is 0.3 squared times that epsilon x is 200 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inch. And that is all plus Poisson's ratio times strain in the y. Poisson's ratio, 0.3, strain in the y, 
5.262 times 10 to the negative fifth inches per inch. And that will get you your normal strain in the x or your normal stress in the x direction equal to 6639.56 psi. Let me go ahead and get another sheet of paper here. All right. Now, uh, going for our stress in the y direction. I'm going to move over a little bit. We have sigma y. Oh. It's equal to same thing as up there, just a slight difference right here. We're gonna go ahead and do epsilon y plus Poisson's ratio times epsilon x. And we go ahead and plug in our numbers for that. We have 28 times 10 to the sixth PSI divided by one minus Poisson's ratio squared. There's a little square there, I hope you can see that. Times 5.262 times 10 to the negative fifth inches per inch, that's our strain in the y direction, plus Poisson's ratio times our strain in the x direction. 0.3 times 200 times 10 to the negative sixth inches per inch. And when you go ahead and crunch all of those numbers, you're gonna have your stress in the y direction equal to 3,465.23 PSI. The last transformation we need to make here is to get our shear stress. Tau xy, which is just gonna go ahead and be equal to g times the shear strain xy. And I went ahead and I wrote down our G value in advance, 2.8 times 10 to the sixth PSI. 10.8 times 10 to the sixth PSI. And that is going to be multiplied by our shear strain, which is 0 0.00145 inches per inch which gives you a value of tau xy is equal to 15,660 PSI. So what we've just done is we've taken our state of strains and we've converted them into our state of stresses using uh, Hooke's Law. So now what we're gonna do is use Mohs Circle to find out what our principal stresses are. So the first step, uh, obviously I'm gonna draw a little coordinate axis here. Let me make this nice and straight. Okay. So, uh, first thing we want to do when doing more circle is plot two points. We want to plot our sigma x negative tau xy and sigma y tau xy. So I'll go ahead and just start doing that here. So this point down here, we're going to go ahead and make that sigma x negative tau xy, and that sigma x value, let me see, that's 6639 psi. And this other value is gonna be our sigma y, and that's equal to sigma x. And sigma y is 3465 psi. I'm getting a little crammed on room here. We'll see what I can do about that. And this point here is going to be sigma y tau xy. So next thing we want to do is go ahead and draw our diameter. It's going straight across. We can go ahead and draw our little circle if we want to. I'm not the best artist. Again, I apologize. So what we're looking at here is more circle. And this here on the, our horizontal axis is our stress. Over here, we've got our strain. So just by looking at this, we can see that our absolute maximum values of our stress are gonna occur, of our normal stress, is gonna occur when our shear stress is zero. So one of our principal stresses is gonna exist here. We'll go ahead and call this sigma one. The other one is gonna go ahead and exist here. Let's call that sigma two. Um, so these are the normal subscripts that we've been using for principal stresses. 
Please don't confuse those with uh, subscripts one and two that we're using for the strain gauges. Um, okay, so to find our principal stresses, essentially what we need to do is find our center and then find the radius. And our center is just gonna be equal to the average of our stresses that we have here. So we're gonna go and have the X value for our center is equal to sigma X plus sigma Y divided by two, which is equal to 6,639.56 PSI minus 3,465.23 PSI. Again, I'm so sorry for my handwriting. Divided by two, and that's a plus. That's a plus, my bad. And so we get X center as being equal to 5,052.4 PSI. So that's the value that we're getting right here, X center. Now we wanna go ahead and find our radius. And the way that we go ahead and find our radius is we're gonna use Pythagorean's theorem and we're gonna find this distance here. So X center minus sigma XY, this distance here. And we're gonna use Pythagorean theorem with this vertical height here, which is tau XY in order to find R. And we're gonna add and subtract that to the center to find sigma one and sigma two. So R is gonna be equal to the square root of this distance here, which is X center minus sigma Y squared plus tau XY squared. So, continuing on with that, X center 5052.4 PSI minus sigma Y, which is 3,465.23 PSI squared plus 15,660 PSI squared. And when you go ahead and crunch all those numbers, you're gonna get a radius equal to 15,000 740.22. And these units don't um, never mind. Yeah, they apply here. Um, okay. So here we have our radius, and now what we know is sigma 1 and 2 is equal to the center plus or minus the radius. So what we have is sigma 1, 2 is equal to x center plus or minus r, which is going to be equal to 5,502. 0.4 PSI plus or minus 15,740.22 PSI. And when you crunch those out, you're going to have single one and two equal to 20,792.23 PSI and negative 10,688.23 PSI. The problem asks us to report it in KSI, so the last thing that we'll do for our normal stresses is convert those to KSI, which gives us 20.79 KSI for sigma one and negative 10.69 KSI for sigma two. So the last thing we need to do is go ahead and get our shear stress. Um, now our shear stress, our maximum shear stress is just gonna be occurring at the top of this circle. You can see that just based on the diagram, right? So zero plus the radius will give us our tau max. That's where we're starting, that's where we're going up. Zero plus R. Do zero plus one five seven four zero point two two psi, which is equal to just that. I'll go ahead and convert it now to make it nice. Fifteen point seven four ksi is our tau max. 
So, just as an overview, we were given the Strain Rosé on AISI 302 stainless steel. We were given the readings on each of those. And based on those readings, we had to find our state of stresses. From our state of stresses, we could have gone one of two ways. We could have either immediately transitioned into, I'm sorry, we started by calculating our state of strain. From there, we had one of two ways to go. We could either find our principal strains or we could convert into stresses. We went ahead and converted into stresses and then used more circle to find our principal stresses in both the normal and shear directions. Thank you and have a good day. Oh, I hope that uh, you saw all of that during the video. I guess I'll go ahead and find out. Thank you.